All right, aloha, friends, and welcome to another episode of Game Time with the Goss, brought to you by uh, GM Sports Media and Get Recruited Websites. We help athletes feel like stars. Join with my good buddy, the Chocolate Bear, Friday Night Glories, Kenny Matthews. Uh, we got another round of softball and baseball. Softball, still good, good amount of uh, teams in the area, 13 teams from DFW, North Texas, uh, whatever you want to call it, still playing in the regional finals, another step uh, with winners on Saturday, clinching a spot to the state tournament next week. Um, Kenny, just uh, who has kind of impressed you so far throughout this uh, playoff run? I have to go with Northwest. I think the Texans have been, I mean, I know they made a deep run last year out um, too. I kind of just overlooked them a little bit, but man, Abigail, she's been, she's been nails. I mean, she's been nails. She's been putting that team on her back and I'm really, really been impressed with her. And then also I would say, actually say um, Frisco Heritage because of Mrs. Hall. I mean, what can you say about what she's done also? And she's not just doing it on the rubber, Brian. She's doing it with the bat too. You know, I mean, she's had some clutch hits and been scoring some game-winning runs, and they haven't had a whole lot of slugfest. So, I mean, she's been doing it all. So, those are the two surprises I would say so far. Yeah, I know, Frisco, I know Frisco Heritage has had a couple of uh, one-game playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned Abby Young with Northwest. Yeah, she she was dominant against Monterey. Three hits allowed and 23 strikeouts in 14 innings. Um, but she's been like that, you know, throughout this whole season. Yeah. Um, I do want to say maybe Fr Frisco Lone Star uh, could be a surprise team. I don't know how many people got them going that far. Excellent point. Um, Excellent point. And that would be a fun matchup, Lone Star and, and Heritage. They're both Frisco ISD schools, both making it for the first time to the regional final. So... That one's another one game playoff. So, I mean, yeah. I mean <laughs> Heritage, I don't know if they're, they're losing these flips or they, or they like it, um, but they're used to it. If you've got Hall as your pitcher, what would you want to do one game sets? <laughs> yeah. I mean, God. And, uh, yeah, for so sure. <clears throat> and uh, Lone Star, you know, they came back to beat Dayton. They lost game one. And uh, came back and won game two and three. That game three, I don't know if you saw, 13 innings. 13 innings. Aubrey Richardson, what, 250-something pitches that day? That's yeah, crazy. crazy. And she even had the <laughs> uh, the walk-off single in the 13th yep. to win her team to the regional finals. So, uh, mm -hmm. Coach, uh, staff over there at Lone Star doing a great job with uh, the Rangers. And I got to see them twice during the regular season. And, and uh, yeah, I think you made a great point, John, in one of your – when you said that that's probably a surprising team. I thought they were a really good team, but I didn't think that they were a regional final team probably. But, man, they've, they've gotten some big hits. And, I mean, they're, they've they done exact, exactly enough to keep advancing. So, you know, props. Whenever you lose that first game in a three-game set, it's tough to come back and sweep them on the same day the next day. And props to them for that, especially like what you said, a 13-inning marathon. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, you mentioned before this, before we started going, but you, you plan on going there Friday? Yes, I will be there Friday. I'm going to go to Geyer and, um, um, Geyer and Keller tomorrow night. And then I will be there Friday night for the one-game playoff between um, Heritage and um, Lone Star. And, you know, it's, I, I'm looking forward to it. It should be. It's out here ready. Uh, so I'm sure the, the stands will be packed and ready for a game like that. And, and as you said, you know, it's, 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 it's always fun. To, it's fun for a media guy, I should say, to cover a one-game set. For them. It's nervous. Nervous for them. <laughs> yes, yeah, not for them, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Geyer Keller going Wednesday night. They start uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, 6 p.m. at Salt Lake Carroll. Um, Guy are still undefeated, 35-0. and 0. I know uh, I didn't get to watch them last week against with Salt Lake Carroll, but uh looked like Carroll kind of gave them all they could handle. And, you know, you were there for game one. They just – their bats came alive there late. Well, and the thing about it is that the, it, it, what got Geyer started is they manufactured two runs on the base pass to tie the game up at three. And it seemed like that, that just took the edge off a little bit, if that makes any kind of sense. They seemed like you had a lot of relaxed backs. 
Osborne then comes up and hits the big three-run bomb that puts him up at 5-2 at that point in time in the bottom of the fifth. And I really thought to myself, I'm not sure that, um, you know, South Lake Carroll can come back from that being down, just being down three. Then after that, it was hit after hit after hit. Avery Jefferson got a big hit in that game. Kaylee, um, Kaylee, um, Kaylee got a big hit in that game on the Oregon commit. Uh, it just snowballed at that point in time. But, you know, I thought it was really kind of interesting is that Geyer didn't play their best game in the field that game, had a lot of errors in that game. And, and Coach Medford took out Finley four and two-thirds inning because she's a ground ball pitcher. So it was kind of a stroke of brilliance in the way that he did that. But Finley was nails again. I mean, she only gave up the two runs. One of them was unearned. Um, you know, what can you say about that youngster? I mean, you know, she's just going out there and pitching as if she's pitching a select baseball game, at a, a softball game right now. And that's you know, as uh, undefeated as they are, you know, an undefeated team this late in the year, that's kind of crazy to me that a 15-year-old can handle all that, but kudos to her. Yeah, we're here with uh, Friday Night Glory's Kenny Matthews. Uh, you mentioned Avery Jefferson. She came through in game two. Again, Carol gave them all they could handle and had a had a lead late, and uh, she came through with the go-ahead two-run home run. Uh going to ACU, and I know you've seen Jefferson a lot this season. Yeah, yeah. and the thing about it, she's healthy. You know, last year she had the concussion last year. Um, she was injured late in the year. That kind of hurt, hurt them. You know, she's been healthy all this year. I mean, I, I think, and, and I'm, you know, in all the games that I've seen so far, I think the in, the best infield defense is Geyer right now with her at third base and Aaron Peterson at, at um, shortstop. That left side of the infield, man, just seems like they just scoop up everything and make good throws to first. Um, but, yeah, Jefferson's been big. I mean, and she kind of struggled in the first couple of bats in the game that I saw last um, um, last Thursday, I guess it was now, if I get my days right. But she came up big with a big walk in that inning to start some, some things off. And then she also she got the big throw, um, tri um, triple, I believe, in the, in the bottom of the fifth inning. So you get that top of the order – with her and Kaylin and Aaron getting on base, and then you have Osborne providing some power there in the five hole, man, it, it lengthens your lineup a whole lot. Yeah, and I uh, got to see Kellen Flower Mound all three games, maybe the best series of the week yes, in the sir. area. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, game, game, I mean, all three games were, were great. Game one and two were really, really close. Pitchers battle. You know, you had Sadie Beck and Joy Hood for Keller. You had Landry Harris for uh, for Flower Mound. Um, you know, I mean, first I got to give props to, to Landry Harris because, uh, you know, I know she had battled some injuries and some uh, pitch count limit, things like that. Pitch count restrictions, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, she uh, gives up a, a late two-run single to Kaya Fabella uh, as Keller won 2-1 in game one. And then she has to go back the next day. She, her first time pitching back-to-back -back games this season, and she throws a no-hitter. No-hitter. <laughs> no-hitter allows just three base runners. Um, but, you know, it got hard uh, the third straight day in the, in the heat in Argyle on that turf and uh, just kind of looked like fatigue finally finally set in. But um, congrats to her. She had a great career. But uh, for Keller, I mean, Sadie Beck pitched phenomenal in both game one and two, only one run allowed both times. Uh, they were able to win game three, five to one. And uh, Kaya, her catcher, again, the hero in game one, and in game two, she started that offense with that two-run home run in the first inning. Uh, Marissa Espinosa also had a home run. So I'm really looking forward to Keller and Gar. You know, the, it's been a few years, but they were both in the same district. Um, but man, that, that should be a fun series with, with again, you know, probably Beck in game one, Montgomery, probably for Geyer, mm -hmm. um, you know, Keller, Keller, they're both good programs, obviously, uh, with a lot of history. Uh, this is the, this is Keller's 13th trip to the regional final first since 2009. It's only Geyer's second time, you know, playing in that tough, always tough regions and whatnot, but this is the first time since 2010. Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Sounds like you're going to go Wednesday. I'm going to shoot for Friday. Uh, that that game, all three games are in South Lake Carroll. 
Yeah. And, and I think the coaching, I mean, you know, Christina and coach Medford, I mean, you got, you talk about two pillars in the coaching ranks here in the, in the area going up head to head against each other. So the battle of the wits should be interesting there. You got, you got a team, both teams want to put the ball in play. I mean, they don't have it, you know, they don't have an enormous amount of power in their lineup. So it's going to be fun seeing how they send runners and seeing how they, you know, move runners around. I'm really looking forward to see kind of that chess match, you know, in that game. I think it's going to be really good. And then, you know, even Robel, I mean, I always say her name wrong, Robel, but Dello, she came in last week and pitched for a guy to finish up that game. So you would think that she would probably get the start in game two, you know, depending on, um, you know, you got that extra day of rest. So I guess you could use your ace back to back games in there, but I guess it depends on how you win or lose. But I think it's going to be exciting. I mean, I really think that Geyer is going to be really, really tested here against a very, very good Keller team and with a bunch of pedigree, that's for sure. Yeah, I could see if uh, Geyer wins game one. Uh, I could see Medford maybe resting Montgomery for game two, maybe bringing, him, bringing her in in yeah. case, you know, the wheels kind of start falling off. But, uh, but, yeah, I could see that. But, yeah, I'm excited for that that matchup. Again, that's the 6A Region 1 final, and uh, winner goes to state. We mentioned uh, we mentioned Northwest with Abby Young. Um, she really just needs, at this point, one run to, to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, they get a tough test, too, with the Colleyville Heritage. Uh, that series is in Byron Nelson. I'll probably shoot for that one, game one, starting on Wednesday tomorrow. Uh, Hollyville, another team that kind of snapped a long drought, even longer drought. 1998 was the last time they went to the regional final. Yeah. Um, you know, got that two game sweep uh, last last week against Hanks. You know, it, you, one side of it is is obviously the, the dominant pitcher with Abby Young and Northwest and the other side. Uh, Lindsay McConnell has been pitching very well. Uh, yeah. I mean, granted, Colleyville is getting a little more offense than Northwest, but uh, for her to, to help the team get this far, she has pitched very well. Uh, but uh, yeah, game two against Hanks, got a couple home runs from, from Danae Dixon and uh, Nia Cisneros, who's kind of been on a tear right now. Nia's yes, she is. <laughs> had a home run in three straight playoff games at least. But um, yeah, what do you kind of see from that matchup? And you got, you got, you know, you know, got the Missouri State signee, Alexis Perales. Um, she's the one that got the bases loaded walk um, to win one of those games there also. Um, you know, I saw Heritage against Grapevine earlier this year. And, you know, I know that they were just kind of getting into a little bit of a groove at that point in time when I talked with Coach after the game. And, you know, they just seem to be going out there again. I, I hate to sound routine here. They're just playing sound softball, you know. They're not throwing the ball all over the yard. I said they're, you know, getting some timely hits. And they and you brought up a great point. McConnell's been pitching extremely well for them. So, you know, you get timely hitting and good defense and good pitch, and you're going to make some runs here. And I mean, you know, I'm I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm pleasantly surprised by that. I would just say I'm a little surprised that they're here in the regional final. But man, that's a good that's a good softball team. And I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to see those power hitters up going up against, you know, Abby. I right. think that's probably the matchup to me there because, you know, if, if, if you get one run for Abby, that might be enough, but you might just get one person on and then a two run bomb and lose two to one. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> you know, it'd be really interesting to see the power of the lineup of Heritage against Abby. I think that's good. I think that's the matchup that I would be most looking forward to. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they haven't played this year, but the last two years they're in the same district. So there are there are kids on both teams that are, you know, familiar with each other. Uh, I know obviously it's a different different year, and yep. you know, Abby's, Abby's kind of 100% or more than that, it seems like it. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to that matchup. That's the 5A Region 1 final uh, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday at Byron Nelson. Uh, we talked about 5A Region 2 with the Frisco teams. You know, uh, there's there's a couple other ones. I mean, Decatur's still in the regional final after uh, game two and three wins against Dumas. Uh, Aubrey, Aubrey in 4A Region 2 taking on Van Alstine. Uh, they're both very familiar. Uh, they're in the same district. 
and I've seen Aubrey a couple of times and I know the, the first couple of rounds, uh, you couldn't really gauge how well this team was because of the competition. But, uh, you know, now they beat a Sulphur Springs team with a very good pitcher in Crimson Bryant. You know, game one, uh, or excuse me, game two and three were one zero games. Maya Cherry coming through. Um, yeah, I don't, it's just, uh, and even game three with uh, Brinley Duncan, it was only, or excuse me, game one, it was only 3 0. 3 0. Um, so she pitched, very, she pitched very well too, but, you know, I've seen Aubrey, they could, they, they can obviously put up the, the runs, and then now with this, this last series, they can, deal it out in the circle um and again they're, they're very familiar with van alstein uh riley adams is their pitcher uh actually van alstein first time since 1994 to the regional final which was like maybe year two or three of softball in the state so <laughs> um, yeah i'm looking forward to that one that's a one gamer i might go to that one that's thursday at uh, rock hill yeah, I saw that it was on Thursday. And I'm 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 trying to decide if I if I can have enough time to do all. I know you love Rock Hill. You four love, days. You <laughs> love going to Rock Hill. I, I, I'm trying to stay actively, you know, keeping a happy wife too. Sometimes. That's <laughs> a I, I've got to talk her into letting me go to that game because I, I love the one game set. You know, Coach Bud at Rock Hill let me in. I know that for no problem. Sit in the press box and. And I think you made a great point here again. Aubrey scores runs, but even when they didn't, you know, have, you know, even when they couldn't, they still were able to peel off two wins, you know, because they had stellar pitching, which, you know, I think that was probably maybe one of the question marks going in to the playoffs for them. that they have enough pitching to get to Austin? Well, after last weekend, I think that question was answered. <laughs> Yeah, I know they're hungry for this uh, state appearance uh, last year coming up short in the semis. Previous year in 21, lost in this round, the regional finals. So they're trying to get over that hump. Oh. Um, again, I've seen I've seen them a couple times this season. Uh, they they got some good bats with uh, Keeley Fuller to start. Uh, Tamaya Cherry's actually the one to hit the, the home run in the second inning in uh, game three. Um you know, Abby Buxton and, and Abby Hammett. It, it's a, it's a, it can be a loaded lineup, but uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I covered Van Alstein a uh, couple couple years when I first got to Texas, um, but it's been a while. You know, if I go Thursday, I hope, uh, hopefully I get to see my buddy Jeff Webster, but um, but yeah, you know, congrats to them. Um, I don't know how, how, how many people thought they were going this far as well. They beat a very good Farmersville team in two games, and yes. again, it's the first time in almost uh, thirty years. So, storied Farmersville team. <laughs> I will. Uh, yes. I will try and text Kim to to get you to. <laughs> yes, all please text Kim and say let the bear go to Park Hill on on Thursday, please. <laughs> I plead with you. <laughs> again, here with uh, Friday Night Glories, Kenny Matthews. Uh, and really quick, I just want to mention, because we already talked about Geiger and, and Aubrey. I mean, you still have all these teams still playing in the playoffs. I love and, your uh, stats that you had up here. Geiger, Geiger and Aubrey are the only two schools in the area to still have baseball and softball teams playing this this deep. So, Wow, that's crazy to me. You yeah. would have thought that Keller would have been the one, you know, that would have been there. But baseball side didn't, yeah. didn't hold up well last week. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so, so real quick, again, I mentioned Decatur, uh, Macy Jones, uh, Chase, Chase Freeman, you know, they said they got some good kids there. They're at the regional final again. Um, you have, if you want to go out a little east uh, to Emory Reigns, they're playing White's yeah, Ball. I, I, know. <laughs> I mean, Matt, Matt Diggs will probably tell me Emory Reigns is a DFW team. <laughs> And, and, and does now and now, did the Grandview's baseball team lose? Grandview's baseball team lost a couple rounds ago, so yeah. A couple rounds ago, okay, okay. Then what well, I was, you'll have, you'll have uh, Decatur in four A Region One, Aubrey versus Van Alstine in Region Two, uh, Emory Reigns and Whitesboro in, in Region, uh, excuse me, three A Region Two, okay. and uh, Reigns Reigns has really turned into a, a softball power. This is the fourth time in six years or really five seasons if you 
minus COVID, but uh, and then Whitesboro. I mean, they're they're 34, 35 win team. Avery Howerton is is a phenomenal pitcher. They're putting up some big stats. If you if you get a chance to look at Whitesboro's stats, they're just I just saw the numbers. Of the, I just saw the numbers were going. I, I, I and to be fair, I didn't know what the competition level was. Right. You know, so I, I, I just to be fair, people. I'm on people think I'm a softball expert. But I, I just didn't know the teams that they were beating were, you know, you know, high level competition right. or not. Any way you look at it, if they're not, they're definitely doing what they're supposed to do against an inferior competition. That's put up spots. <laughs> and that's um, Avery, Avery's been pitching well, and. Um, uh Galloway is uh has I think 18 home runs on the season so this is Whitesboro's first time to the uh regional wow. final um as and then Grandview uh we mentioned Grandview 3A region 3 uh they're like 35 and 2 uh they beat Orangefield 5-0 another team sort of like sort of like Aubrey where uh they could put up the the runs at any moment and but they could still win a one zero contest with pitchers like Caden Blackman and uh Maddie Doty. But uh Bella Jeter gotta give her a shout out. She's got seven home runs during this this playoff run alone. Um so there's another team that's kind of getting, trying to get over the hop. They've been the state just once and didn't come away with the title. So I know Grandview is a finally trying to bring home that that softball title. Um, and then the last last team is uh, Trenton in, in 2A Region 2. Um, the Tigers, first time since 2016. Um, and uh, they could put up some runs, too. They, they really beat down Munster in, in the region. I saw that they beat down Munster, and I just didn't know much about Munster, to be fair again. <laughs> you know, but I was like, whoa, that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that's I know impressive. one kid from there, em Emma Dudley, she – got voted my player of the week this season. So, um, but yeah, uh, you know, I still, I still want to stick with softball for a bit here. Um, you know, with the NCAA super regionals, uh, we got some kids still playing actually seven of them from the DFW area. Uh, and they all seem to be in still water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a four over there in Oklahoma. <laughs> with uh, OU and Oklahoma State. But, um, you know, you have Jada Coleman, who's uh, at o OU, three at Oklahoma State, Hayden Sokolowski, uh, Mickey Wark, and um, uh, Aubrey Schneidmiller from, from Burleson. Uh, then you got Tatum Boyd from, at uh, Stanford, who played at Plano West. Um, now, now I'm losing it. Oh, hold on. Okay, I'll pull it up for you. You can just talk here, man, and I'll get it on Twitter. This is two. I just did this story, too. Yeah. It's called, we just get tired heads sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Let's see here. We're missing two people, and we shouldn't be missing them at all, right? Let's see. Uh, of course, I can't find it now when you're talking about it. You know, it, it, um, it, yeah, it's uh, Bella Dayton, uh, who's at UT and played at Wiley. Um, and then Alexa Langoliers, who played Alexa at Lang yes. yeah, she's at Louisiana. Her so, brother's not do her brother's not doing too bad on the MLB left side either. Yeah. So I mean <laughs> seven, seven players, uh, you know, obviously kind of led by Jada Coleman, who's just, you know, on the number one team. She got 15 home runs, play a uh, big 12 player of the year. I'm glad you brought her up because I'm very disappointed that she was left off the player of the year award. That's a travesty that neither her or Ball did not make or may. None of the three from the number one ranked team in the country, none of them making for the player of the year. That's a travesty. But go ahead. Didn't mean to yeah. interrupt. <laughs> uh, no, you're good. So, yeah, Jada Coleman at OU, uh, Hayden Sokolowski, Oklahoma State. She got a big hit the other uh, day. Mickey Ward from Oklahoma State, who's, you know, good to see her playing and producing the way and she healthy. does. And yeah. healthy. That's the best thing for her. That's what um, I'm looking for. Audrey Steinmiller at Oklahoma State, Alexa Langoliers, who had a home run over the weekend and had a, a great catch in foul territory uh, for Louisiana Lafayette against LSU. Bella, Bella Dayton. Hey, big uh, win for the Raging Cajuns over LSU. Big yeah, win. Yeah. <laughs> Bella Dayton of Texas, who uh, helped the team to the 
national title game last season. And then Tatum Boy from uh, Plano West, she's she's playing with Stanford. But um, what do you remember? What do you remember from watching uh, Jada Coleman for the first time at the Colony? Do you remember that that day? Yes. <laughs> I can remember going out and seeing Jada Coleman when she was probably maybe 10 years old at the time. And she's at practice. She's take the varsity team is hitting, you know, BP. They're hitting all these rockets at her and she's backhanded it like she's like she was 20 years old. I'm like, that's crazy to me. That's the first impression that I had of Jada Coleman. I mean, I couldn't believe that a 10 year old was just statue. Nothing was getting by her and she was playing third base and she's left-handed. <laughs> you know, that was crazy to me. <laughs> she's just a phenomenal athlete. And the one thing I tell people each and every day that they ask me about Jada Coleman, her biggest attribute to me is she's, she's the same person she was when she was 10 years old that she is now. All the stuff that's happened, all the success she's had, all the awards she's had, she's the same humble person. So that to me is bigger than what her game is, and that's saying a lot. Yeah, and you know, it's, it starts with uh, her parents, obviously, with, with Deanna and, and Cedric. So some good people there. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely it does start right there. Well, uh, we've got a couple of minutes here. Um, is there anything you, you'd like to add or just what, what do you, some, some thoughts about well, this weekend? I, well, I, I think that, I, I, you know, I love this weekend because, I, you know, we're going to be, be at State, Austin. It's always nice to see familiar faces when you're, in, you know, in Austin that you've covered throughout the year. Uh, but I also think it's, I always say that this is the bittersweet weekend. You know, you're going to have some people that we have good relationships that we've known over the years that, you know, their careers are going to be over and they're one step away from being in state. So, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, but, you know, it's going to be nice that we're going to finally have a Frisco team that's going to be at state, you know, automatically with Heritage and Lone Star playing against each other. So we're going to have a Frisco ISD school there. So they're going to be represented. Um, and you got, I mean, like, we, already got, we already got at least uh, four with uh, – yeah. With also Colleyville and Northwest, Keller, Geyer, yep. Aubrey Van Alstein. So, yep, it's going to be nice to see familiar faces, like you said, in Austin. And uh, and you know, and I think that a little bit this weekend is, you know, does the big win that Geyer had, the way they won with Avery Jefferson hitting that bomb in the seventh inning to keep that winning streak alive, is that something that kind of gives them a little juice, you know? You know, is that a big momentum deal for them? Because, you know, you're finally on the cusp of losing a game for, you know, for how long it's been. And then you come out and you steal one late. You know, that, that's kind of one of those things you can kind of build on that a little bit, I think. So I think that that's probably pretty much the most highly, you know, the biggest contest this weekend is between those two powers. And, and I, like I said, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm, I'm glad I'm going to at least get to see one of those games, uh, maybe – Maybe maybe I get lucky and see a game three on Saturday, <laughs> but I, I have a feeling that either one of those coaches really don't want to play a game on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome stuff uh, as always. Uh, that's Friday Night Glory's Kenny Matthews, and this is Game Time with the Goss. Or brought to you by uh, GM Sports Media and Get Recruited websites. Chocolate Bear, my brother. Always uh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure Man, I appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure, man. We'll get you guys updated. Check our Twitters, and we'll keep everybody. If you can't go, just check us out. We'll put it up. But, yeah, fun time of year. And, boy, I can't believe it. In eight days, we'll be at State. Sounds crazy to me. Where awesome. did the time go? Awesome. Thanks, Kenny. <laughs>